Hello everybody, my name is Philip Booth. I am an engineer here at InterSystems Corporation and today I'll be taking you through a tutorial on the InterSystems IRIS data platform. So to get started, I'm going to take you through a high level overview of exactly what our demo is doing. And then later on, I'll take you through each piece individually so I can go into greater detail. Our demo has four different layers to it. The first layer, the UI, is a health information system simulator that allows for the generation of HL7 messages. The second layer of our demo, the integration layer, is responsible for taking in the generated HL7 messages and converting them into the types required to be sent to other parts of our application. The third layer of our demo is the analytics layer and it's responsible for both storing relevant information from our HL7 message while also providing us with out-of-the-box analytical tools that allow for easy data exploration. And last but not least, the final layer is our cloud services layer, and it consists of an API that interacts with Amazon's simple notification service, and it allows us to send SMS notifications to phone numbers of our choosing. So in summary, our demo consists of a UI that generates HL7 appointment scheduling messages that are sent to an integration layer where these messages are converted into formats that can both be stored on our database and also be sent to an API that allows for the sending of the appointment details through Amazon's simple notification service. To get started with our demo we'll come to the bottom left hand corner of our landing page and click the start demo button. What this does is it opens up 10 distinct tabs in your web browser, nine of which are related to the inner systems management portal and one of which takes you to the Amazon Web Services website where you can create your own developer account. So to get started, I'll take you through each one of the pages related to the Inner Systems Management Portal. The first page is your credentials page. This is the page where you can come and securely store any credentials that your running instance of Iris needs. So for us, this is where we store our AWS Access Key credential. The next page is the production configuration page. This allows you to take a look at your interoperability layer and see how everything's connected. So as you can see, messages come from your EMR HL7 feed are sent to a feed router, which then routes these messages to both the AWS SNS operation as well as the appointment store operation. The next page is your rule editor page. This allows you to control the behavior of the EMR HL7 feed router that you can see on your production page. So HL7 messages come in, they're sent to the AWS SNS operation, and they're also sent to the appointment store operation. So the next page is our data transformation builder page. On this page you can see our properties on the incoming HL7 message are used to create a message of type iris demo bo SNS request. The phone number first name, last name, and appointment time are all taken from your HL7 message and are used to configure a new message type that is then sent to the part of your application responsible for sending SMS notifications. If you take a look at the structure of the incoming HL7 message, you can see that it's quite large with lots of properties on it. The beauty of using the Data Transformation Builder is that you get a nice user interface for exploring the properties of the HL7 message. And it also lets you easily take the properties that you want from the incoming message and map them to the properties on the outgoing target message that you're trying to create. Our next page is the SQL Exploration page. We can come to this page if we want to manually explore any of the data tables that we have in our running instance of IRIS. So for us, we're storing appointment information. We can find the table that corresponds to appointment info, drag it into the box, hit execute, and manually run that SQL. The next page is our message trace. The message trace allows us to see any messages that make it into our interoperability layer. So if we take a look at our production, any messages that come from the EMR HL7 feed are sent to the router and then routed to these two separate business operations are tracked inside the message trace. So whether you're an application developer testing some new features of your integration layer, you're a support engineer trying to track down a troublesome bug, 
or a person that's trying to perform some auditing for security purposes, the message trace is your best friend and makes doing your job a whole lot easier. Our next page is the UI for our demo. The UI is responsible for generating the HL7 messages that then get sent to our interoperability layer. So to start, I'll tell you a little bit about HL7. HL7 stands for Health Level 7, and it is an interoperability standard used in healthcare. It's a message type that allows health information systems to communicate with one another. So if you look closely here, the message that we're generating is a notification of a new appointment booking. It has six segments, MSH, SCH, PID, PV1, RGS, and AIP. So the user interface that we have here allows you to update the first name, the last name, the phone number, which if you scroll to the right here you can see, and finally, the appointment time. And then when you're ready, you can send this message to our interoperability layer. The last two pages of our demo are related to the out-of-the-box business analytics tools provided by InterSystems Iris. If we come to our first page, we have our analytics architect page. Here, we can take properties stored on data tables in our database and use them to configure what we want available to us when we want to explore data using pivot tables. So if you take a look at the dimensions, we have city, gender, specialty, and start date time all available properties on each row in our appointment table. And if we want to explore this data, we can come to our analyzer page. And similarly, in dimensions, we have city, gender, specialty, and start date time. So let's say I want to take a look at the number of appointments scheduled, and I want to separate it based on city. I can drag city into rows here, and immediately I can see the split of appointments that have been scheduled in each city. Now let's say I want to dive a little bit deeper here. I not only want to see appointments scheduled by city, but I also want to see specialty as well. I can drag specialty in here, and now it's even more specific, and I can get the number of appointments scheduled for a specific city and a specific specialty. So now that I've taken you through every page of our demo, let's go ahead and schedule some appointments. To get started, we'll come to our UI and update our HL7 message. So for me, I'll put some inputs in there for myself. And for the phone number, it's really important to include the country code. So for me, that's one. Update the HL7 message, and then send it. So there, the message has been sent. After sending the message, you can come into your message trace. Oh, Looks like we received our text message right here. You can come into the message trace, refresh it, click on the newest message, and here you're in the visual trace. So the visual trace allows you to take a look at every single step that your message took in your integration layer and allows you to take a look at the message contents at each individual step. So to get started here, we'll take a look at the EMR HL7 feed. This is the location of the message that we generate from the UI. So the message gets sent from the HL7 feed to the feed router. And if we want to take a look at the contents, we can click on the contents tab. And here it shows you that it's just a straight HL7 message. My last name, my first name, the appointment time. So it matches with the message that we just generated. Once it enters the feed router, the message gets sent through the HL7 to SMS transformer. And this is where you can see in our data transformation layer. So the phone number, the first name, the last name, and the appointment time all get pulled off our HL7 message and then get turned into this new message type that gets sent to our API that interacts with AWS. So now, our newly generated message gets sent to the AWS SNS operation. If you want to take a look at the contents of this message, you can see it has phone number, first name, last name, and appointment time. As you can see, our message also has this message property as well. 
this is something that is generated. It's not pulled off of the HL7 message. And I'll show you how this works in a future video. Our message is also sent to an EMR HL7 appointment store operation. If we take a look at the contents of this message, we can see that it, once again, it's just a straight HL7 message. Unlike in this one, where the message is sent through a data transformation layer and converted to a message of a new type, iris demo, bo, sns request, here the HL7 message is sent straight through to our operation, where it's stored on the database. So that's it for the demo, guys. Um, I hope it was helpful. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. Um, I know I threw a lot at you here, but the thing you need to understand is when you're building applications on top of Iris, you get a lot of things out of the box. So the visual trace that we're currently taking a look at, you get that out of the box. The message trace, SQL Explorer, uh, any of your analytics tools, you get all of that with almost zero coding and minimal configuration. So it really does speed up your development process. So if your goal was just to be walked through the demo, you can stop here, you're all set. But if you're like me and you like to go more in depth and, and you want to take a look at the code that went into building this demo, feel free to go back to the landing page and take a look at our next video, the Build It Yourself video. This is going to be about five to ten minutes of your time and at the end of it you'll really be able to see exactly what's going on under the hood of this demo. I highly recommend checking it out. Or if you're interested in just poking around on your own. If you check out the links in the description of this video, you'll see that we have a link to the InterSystems Open Exchange as well as GitHub, so feel free to pull the code yourself and poke around at your own pace. Thank you guys.